Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, this morning. We thank you for your goodness. Indeed, Father, we are surrounded by your goodness. We choose to look at the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Father, that this morning we are alive, not because of anything that you are, we have done, but because of your goodness. Thank you that, Father, into this day you have ushered new mercies for us. So, Father, whatever we face in this day, your grace is sufficient for us. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor as we begin to listen to your word. I pray this morning that, Father, you alone are going to speak to us, Father God. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning, good morning, happy Heritage Day, South Africa. We are resting here in Zanzi. It's a public holiday for some people, but some of us are still working and we give glory to God for work. So we are winding up our topic that we began on Monday, uh, which was perplexed. Uh, for those that are joining us for the very first time, just a brief run through. So what we, we looked at was the topic, the title, Perplexed. So we, we looked at what to do when you don't know what to do. And uh, what brought this theme up is that people during this time have gone through a lot and you find that there are people that don't even know what to do, don't even know what to say. Some people even feel that they have actually said all the prayers. So hence the topic perplexed. We defined perplexed uh, on Monday and we said that perplexed means to be in a place where you don't know what to do, to be doubtful, to be, uh, to be anxious, to be embarrassed, to be at a place where you just don't know where to go. You are at a crossroad. And then we use the, the, the woman, the widow, and Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1, my favorite scripture in the Bible, because uh, the ministry is based, based and built and birthed upon the scripture. So then the, the widow and Elisha, how the husband who was a minister of the gospel, passed away and he has left debt in the house. We said that God does not want us to owe any man anything except to love him. And we did establish that we need to live within our means, you know. So we, we said having a debt for a mortgage or, or a house to live in, it's acceptable, but we cannot be having credit uh, card, uh, whatever it is, and uh, show what is store cards, whatever it is. So let's live within our means. We saw that this woman, when she found herself uh, in a position where she didn't know what to do, she went to ask Elisha. Why did she go to ask Elisha? Because she believed in the God of Elisha. So she went to ask. And the whole concept here is that when we find ourselves at a place where we don't know what to do, we should be able to approach God and ask, ask. Our help does not come from anywhere but from God. So we need to ask. We should not be running to each and every Jim and Jack. And then God is our last resort. We should be running to God and asking him what to do. Number two, listening. She listened to what Elisha said to her. When we are looking at the the top the 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 part of listening, we establish that there is a big difference between listening and hearing. Most of the times we are saying we are listening, but yet we are not. We are hearing. So she listened, and when she was listening. They comes in obedience. She was asked to do, excuse me. She was asked to do certain things. So she obeyed. Obedience come onto the picture. Now with obedience, we, we looked at the fact that are you able to obey God even when you don't understand what is required? Even when you don't understand what he's asking you to do, we say, do you obey God when what you are going to do will cause you an embarrassment? You know, will you obey God? 
because this woman had to go and borrow vessels. Borrowing actually can be so, such an embarrassment, but she had to do it because the destiny of her, her family, her future depended on her obeying what was being asked of her. And then we looked at trusting. Do we, do we, do we trust what we are being taught to do? You know, Elisha said to her, go borrow vessels. Do not gather just a few. So she trusted Elisha. She received the divine instructions that she was given and she did just that. What about us? Do we trust God when what he's telling us to do is not convenient for us? We don't like what he's telling us. And then lastly, yesterday, we looked at the fact that God uses extraordinary things and ordinary people. This woman was just a widow. So she was used, you know, she was used to minister a word. And we said that when she followed the instructions of going to the house and shutting the door, it was so that nobody would take the credit. Nobody would come and say, no, I saw someone enter the house and they had actually jerry cans of, of, of oil. The man of God stepped aside, gave the instructions, asked her to do what she needed to do so that no one could say that it was a man of God who made up this whole, um, what is it, miracle. So we even said that as women and men of God, we need to step aside and let people do that which God is asking them to do. Let people see the hand of God. That's what we said. The, the, she, she said she had a small jar and then Elisha tells her to go and get vessels, big storage containers. God is telling us to make room because blessings are coming. Blessings are coming. The heaven doors are, have been opened already. We must make room to receive that which God is about to do. We don't underestimate or devalue that which we have. So this morning we are concluding. You know, so just as we have seen that we 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 when we are perplexed, what we 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 need to do has been shown to us. But we, one thing that I am interested in is the other week when we were looking at cast down, we saw that Paul says that we are perplexed, but not in despair. We are perplexed, but not in despair. To be in despair is to feel hopeless. What is hope? A feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen, a feeling of trust. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The conviction of things not seen. So the question is, how can we have hope when everything looks hopeless? How can we have hope when everything looks hopeless? When we, when we turn around, it's dry. When we turn around, everything seems to be dead. How can we have hope? In Romans 5, verses 3 and 5, Paul says that we can rejoice in our suffering. We can rejoice in our suffering because we are a people of hope. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God will never put his children to shame. God will never put your children, uh, us, us, his children to shame. 
So when the enemy is, is telling you, is whispering to you not to listen to God, when the enemy is coming to you and bringing words that you are going to be laughed at, you are going to be mocked, do not listen to that voice. Listen to what God is telling you. Obey God. So then now, how, how can we have hope when everything looks hopeless? How can we have hope when everything looks hopeless? In the midst of suffering, we can rejoice because, the, because these challenges, these challenges causes us to, number one, rely on God's presence. It, the challenges, the seasons, the crossroads, the valleys, the mountains, whatever it is that you have gone through during this time. Number one, it, they cause us to rely on God's presence. Rejoicing in suffering does not mean celebrating when bad news comes, by the way. But it does mean that we can believe that God is doing a redemptive work. This word redemptive means that God does not waste a heart or a disappointment. God does not waste a heart or a disappointment. He is using them to shape and to build us into the image of Jesus, which is his highest passion. He doesn't waste a heart. He doesn't waste a disappointment. He doesn't waste a pain. When we go through uh, uh, suffering, we often pray and seek God more intensely than at other times. My greatest times of growth have been when I have reached the end of my resources and all I have left is, I've left is Jesus. God uses the suffering to make us rely on his presence. In Psalms 20, 23 verses 4, which we have looked at, David writes that he does not fear because God is with him. He relies on God's presence and it brings him strength and comfort. Remember that for, the, for they to be a shadow, they must be a light. A shadow will not just appear, there must be the light. And what is that light? It is the light from my Father in heaven. I don't know what your valley of the shadow of death. I don't know what your valley of the shadow of death is, but I do know who the light is that is walking with you in that valley. I do know the light that is walking with you in the time of the valley. Remember, you are not staying in the valley. You are passing through and the good shepherd is walking with you. In another psalm, David reveals that one of the reasons for his joy is that he is forgiven. One of the reasons for his joy is that he is forgiven. Because in Psalms 31 verses 1, he says, Blessed is the one who, whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Hallelujah. God will never bring us to shame, people. God will cover our transgressions, our sins, for as long as we are humble, for as long as we repent. We, you can't be in a meeting, by the way. You can't be in a meeting, by the way. And then the prophet, the prophet says you have got HIV because you slept with somebody's husband. Where, whilst the whole church is listening, and this, this I'm saying has happened, you can't. God will never publicly humiliate you like that. If I have committed a sin and I have humbled myself, God will deal with me. That's why we don't go to, to, to the pastor to go and confess our sins. We go to God and we confess. God will never do such to, to you. We can't determine God's love. For, for us based on good or bad circumstances. We determine his love based on the cross and what he did for us on it. Number two, my valleys, my, my mountains, your troubles, 
cause you to rely on God's provision. They cause you to rely on God's provision. That's number two. In 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7, Paul reveals that he has suffered from a thorn in the flesh. And we did look at the thorn in the flesh last week. God was so concerned about Paul not becoming proud. He allowed this to happen to him to prevent him from becoming, uh, what is it, pride. You know, when you, you think you are big, it gets to your, to your head. In our current situations, God is saying to us that his grace is sufficient. And even when we feel weak, he is making us stronger than we have ever seen. There are those who have been confessing and saying, I can't do this. For how long can I do this? It is too much. But the answer, the good news is that the grace of God is sufficient. When we woke up this morning, new messes were waiting for us. New messes to carry us in this day. Whatever we are going to face today, the grace of God is sufficient. His grace is not an abstract idea. It is the person of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. The hell that you are going through may be the very circumstances that God will use to take you to a whole new level. Come on now, receive that. New levels have come. God is using the valley. God is using what you have gone through to take you to another level. I believe that you are no longer the same. In this month of September, September, the ninth month, you are going into another level. Some of you have already gone there. God has already shown you where you are in this level. And some are already rejoicing. We have received those testimonies. Some are voice notes. Hallelujah. So number three, the, 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 the valleys, the problems, the, the storms, they cause you to rely on God's power. They cause you to rely on God's power. Therefore, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9b, the second part of it, it says, therefore, I will boast, for all, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What is your weakness. What is this thing that you have? Because maybe it is a son or maybe a daughter that hasn't quite turned out the way you thought they, they should. A job situation that has gone weary. Is it a medical diagnosis that has caused you uh, to be uh, afraid you are scared? Maybe like Paul, it is also insults. Is it hardships or persecutions? Are people saying nothing good will ever come out of you? Are people laughing? Have they abandoned you? Whatever it is, Paul says, you will boast in those things. Because when we are weak, the power of Christ rest on us. When we are weak, the power of Christ rests in us. The greater the enemy comes at you, the greater the enemy comes at you, the greater the Jesus inside of you. We say that the greater the persecution, the greater the destiny. We did establish that the enemy who always attack aggressively those who are carrying the greatest purpose, those who have got the greatest destiny. The enemy will not leave you nicely there, Nje. No, he will attack. He will attack. And so you don't need to say, I can't do this. Let me give up. The grace of God is sufficient to carry you. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. When you are weak, then he is strong. Remember the greater the attack against you, 
the Christ in you, the greater the Christ in you. But you have to rely on his presence. You have to rely on his presence. Yes, some might have, uh, what is it, forsaken you. Some might have promised that they walk with you. Some might have said they will stand with you come rain or sunshine. But when you look back, they are not there. But so of God, God is with you. He is with you. He will never leave you to fend for yourself. Yes, he has taken you the wrong route. You thought you were going to arrive yesterday, but you are not arriving. Why am I using this route? But remember, he's a good shepherd. He has reasons. There is a purpose why you are taking this long, long route. So his presence is with you. His provision is with you. He will provide everything that you need. If he has given you a dream, a vision, it is birthed from him. It is a kingdom agenda. He will resource it. He will provide. He will send the right help for you. The right people to come and help you. I always get encouraged with Moses because Aaron and her were there to lift him up. When his hands were getting tired, they helped lift him up. And as long as they did that, the children of Israel were able to progress. I believe that God always sends the right help the right help to carry us to help us and his power hallelujah not some power that you get after you go and consult i don't know who mm? somebody that tells you go and bring a black chicken i'm not talking about i am talking at the power i'm talking about the power from god the power, the same power that raised Christ from the grave. It is the same power that resides in you. You should not be feeling intimidated. You have got the power inside of you. This week, take a moment. This week, take a moment as we wind up today, we have finished. We have looked at all these things. So we don't meet for devotions on Saturdays and Sunday. Look at what we have learned this week. I'm finished. Look at what we have learned this week. Write down what you are suffering from. Write down on a piece of paper or nowadays we, we, we have got, what is it? Uh, writing apps, whatever it is. Write it down. That thing that you are suffering from or struggling with. If you write it down on a piece of paper, Place it in an envelope. Sometimes it takes this faith, a step of faith, to do something prophetic as this. Hmm? Listen to the woman of God. Put it in an envelope. On the outside of that envelope, write these words. God has got this. God has got this. And he is transforming me. God is, has got this. And he's transforming me. This is a prophetic step of faith. Now, when that challenge comes to mind, remember to rely on him. Remember to rely on him. So if God is who he says he is, if God is who he says he is, God can do what he says he will do. He will then do it for you. I believe that if God says who he is and God can do what he says he will do, then a little pot of oil, a little pot of oil, a handful of hope, maybe that's more than enough. Let me just actually say it is more than enough. I hope that you've been blessed from what we have learned this week. So we are going to go in prayer right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God. We enter the Holy of Holies this morning. Thank you that, Father, we, are, we have got access into the Holy of Holies. In fact, Father, we don't even enter. We dwell in there. 
we dwell, we, we, we don't dwell, we live in there, sorry Lord. We don't dwell, but we live in there. We live there, that's our permanent residence. The presence of God. We dwell in there, we dwell. Hallelujah, this English. We dwell in there because the Bible says that those who dwell in the presence of the Lord. So we dwell in the Lord. We live in there. We don't just visit. Hallelujah. That's the way. We don't just visit. We dwell, we live permanently in there. We live under an open heaven. We don't close the doors that today we are living and now the next day we are knocking. Father, we live, we dwell. And so because we dwell in there, Father, we are protected. We are covered, Father God. We are covered by you. We are covered, Father God. Everything that we need, Father, it is sorted. And Lord, this week we have learned something. We have learned that, Father, you are with us. We are not a people without hope. So, Father, we leave everything unto you. That, Father, even as we have learned what we have learned this week, Father, may we be able to do and take a practical step of faith. May we be able to do that which you have been asking us to do. We come to you, Father, and we are attentive. We say, Father, here we are. May you be able to speak to us. We are ready to receive the divine instructions from you. We want to follow each uh, bit of the instructions, my God. And so, Father, during this time when people do not know, when there is so much noise circulating around, when people are, are spreading the fire of confusion, when people are trying to decide whether to get vaccinated or not to get vaccinated, whether to quit their jobs or not to quit their jobs, this morning we say that, Father, we are listening to you. We are shutting our ears to the noise out there, but we are listening to you. And we are saying unto you, Father, speak. We are listening to you, O oh God. We shall trust you, Father. We shall trust everything that you have been saying to us through your word. We shall obey you, Father, regardless of the circumstances. We shall obey you, Lord, even when we don't prefer what you are saying. We shall obey you, mighty God, even when we don't understand what you are saying. Because, Father, we understand that obedience is important and understanding can work. We shall obey you, Father, even when it will cause embarrassment, my God. Because, Lord, it, it is not about what people will say. It's about what you are telling us. It's always about you, Jesus. And so, Father, we are here. We have availed ourselves because we have realized that you are an extraordinary God. And you will use those that are willing, those that are willing to follow you, those ordinary people that are willing to obey you. We avail ourselves to you. We say this morning that here we are, Father, use us. Here we are, mighty God, use us. Carry us, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, mighty God, that indeed, Father, we will rely upon you. We will depend upon you. We will look to you. We will run to you, Father. We thank you, Lord. And so, Lord, this weekend, we are grateful, Father. We are grateful that, Lord, indeed, it is a time of rest even for us in Zanzi, Father, as it is a public holiday. But those, the rest of the world that are waking, we are grateful that, Father, indeed, they are able to work. Father, we are grateful for work. When others do not have work, Father God, we are grateful for those that have got work. And so, Father, may we continue with this day worshiping you, listening to what you have to say, speaking to you. May we not lose focus, my Father. Lord, as you are speaking to us to take uh, our positions, 
as you are looking for gatekeepers to take position, as you have been speaking, Father, oracles from above, may we listen to those oracles. We take positions, my God. We are ready to be used. We are ready to run for the Lord. We are ready, Father. We submit, Father God, everything that pertains to our lives unto you. And we say, Father, it is in your hands. You alone are in control. We do not have to worry because we know that, Father, you are in control of everything. Thank you for salvation. We continue to pray for salvation. We pray for salvation, Father for members of our families. We pray for salvation, my God, for for our neighbors. We pray, Father, for salvation for within our communities. We pray for salvation in the nations. Father, when there is an opportunity for us to spread the, the gospel, the good news, we pray that, Father, we will not be afraid. We will not be intimidated. We will not feel embarrassed. But, Father, we will be able to open our mouths to speak. And when we open our mouths to speak about you, Father, you are the one that enables, Father, the Holy Spirit to speak within us, oh God. You, the Holy Spirit preaches, he speaks oracles through us. We are only mere vessels. We are only mouthpieces, my God. So, oh Father, we thank you that we will not feel ashamed or afraid to share the gospel. We will share the gospel. And Father, may people turn their hearts back to you. Those who have hardened their hearts, Father, may they turn to you, Jesus. May they hear your word. Father, we thank you that we are being used during this time to, Father, depopulate hell and populate heaven. We thank you, Father, that the population of heaven is growing. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that, Father, even those nations where the gospel is not allowed, Father, you alone are allowing it to penetrate those nations. We continue to pray, Father, for Afghanistan as well. The Christians, Father, that are being persecuted in there. The Christians, my God, that are doing your work, that, Lord, indeed, as they continue to do your work, Father, you will hide them. You will protect them. Not only will you protect them, but, Father, you will provide to their resources. And, Father, we remember that in that nation, oh God, there are so many people, foreigners, that are trying to leave. We thank you that, Father, you are the one that is able to provide a way out for them. The same way you were able to provide a way out for the children of Israel out of Egypt. And even when they stood, Father, in front of the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army behind them, you still paved a way for them in the sea. Father, this morning we ask you to pave a way for those who are trying to leave Afghanistan. Father, those organizations that are putting their resources together to try and remove, Father, people from there. My God, we pray that you will bless them even more. We pray for governments that are shunning away from joining forces with those organizations that are trying to remove people out of Afghanistan. We pray for those governments that are shunning away, that are, are afraid, Father God, that Lord of of the, of, of the Taliban, that, Father, indeed, those governments, you will cause them, Father, not to fear man, but to fear God. May they hear, may they hearken to the voice of God, because I believe you have been speaking and challenging them to get involved. So, Father, we pray that they will not shun away, but they will do what is right. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that indeed there shall be peace in the nations, my God. We pray for the peace of God, the peace of God in the nation, all across the nations, all across the continents, my Father. We pray for the peace of God. We pray for love that comes from above. We pray for unity. We pray for understanding. We pray. Father, name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you 
that this prayer has been heard by you. You are the God who answers. You answer by fire. So receive the praise, the glory, and the honor this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I know we may not be able to see the answers, Father, in the physical realm, but we believe that, Lord, in the spiritual realm, it has already been done for us. And so, Lord, we receive the blessings. We receive the blessings. We open our hands and we receive the blessings from you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, thank you so much for getting up those in Mzanzi. You had the choice to, to sleep on because we are resting, but thank you so much for taking time to join us. So thank you, family, for joining me this week. We really, really appreciate you. Those that are coming to join us face to face tomorrow, looking forward to just have that personal, in person, in person, I may say, in person fellowship. We have missed that in person fellowship. Those that will join us online, we will be online um, after our praise and worship. So we'll go online at about half past three tomorrow on this same platform. So join us tomorrow. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his uh, face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. If we don't see you tomorrow, we will see you again on Monday, 6 a.m. on this same platform. Shalom, shalom.